Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about my thought process and decision making in the fast castle scenario. So a lot of the times your opponent, especially in this meta, will try to fast castle. And how do you deal with that, especially with a civilization that is not as ideal or made for fast castling, such as the Chinese? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. This is a game from a tournament I played yesterday against Warspite, who is a Taiwanese player. So going into the matchup, Chinese versus Japanese, it can go two ways. Either the Japanese will go 2DC or he will go fast castle. So I'm already aware that this is popular to go for. It's really strong to go fast castle with the uh, Japanese. And so the way you counter it in my mind is I'm going to fast castle myself. But the idea is I'm going to make a few horsemen so I can take out those Shinto priests that try to take the relics early on because he gets an automatic priest. And so the whole idea is kill that priest, buy me some extra time before the next one comes out so I can start taking relics myself. If I get three plus relics, that's really good for me. And then uh, I'll take the game from there. My, maybe I'll go 2DC. Maybe I'll just go all in on one TC and try to finish the game. This is a, a very standard uh, length game. This one is 20 minutes. All right, so what's happening is I'm doing my standard opening here, which is eight uh, on food and then three to gold. I'm going with a village. So it's a very standard uh, fast song uh, opener. And uh, I have I have a video on it as well in my Chinese guide. So you can also practice this one. As usual with this series, this is not a build order guide. This is more of a thought process thing. All right. So there's no rushing, of course. This is uh, a very standard opener, Song Dynasty. I'm going out on the map. Uh, this is Lipany, by the way, the EGC version. And I'm getting my sheep. Scout around the map. They are usually around your base, and they are also on the middle part of the of the map. Here I drop my sheep off again. I have a very good spawn, I would say myself. Um, for Chinese, wood is really, really important. So how I'm thinking about layout is... Well, food is in the back, so that's pretty safe. I got my stone here, and I got my first wood line here as well. The wood line is really important as Chinese. You need wood for farm transitions and stuff like that. And uh, I'm looking at the map, I'm thinking I have front food here. I could put a barbican here. I could also think about expanding up here as there's a boar and a deer pack and berries. So I'm going to have to think about the barbican emplacement. But this is the first decision point when it comes to that. I see the township, which means there's going to be shinobis out. And the shinobis, first off, indicate on water maps that they're going to go fast castle. But here it's on a land map, so I already know that there's going to be something up. And usually when people go shinobis, it's to harass you until the point that they can get fast castle. And so I have a feeling he's going to be playing pretty fast. He's going to be going for the outside resources here. So no farms initially. And so I have to rush up this barbican pretty quickly because the shinobi come out immediately. So I'm going to not put the Barbican here, as I will not have the time to do that, nor up here. I wouldn't ever put it up here, but just as an example. Um, yeah, and a little tip with the Chinese is don't put your Barbican on gold. Your most important resources are wooden food, especially in the feudal age. So yeah, this is a 1TC build now, because I am pretty sure that he's not going to go 2DC. Um, but of course, I will go and confirm it. And then I'm going to make a stable because I want to be killing the shinobis and possibly also raid. If he's going to go fast castle, I want to have those horsemen so I can deal with the Shinto priest, as I explained before. So I see he's pretty heavy on food here. Uh, got the berries. He's got a lot of food under the town centers and he got a tower on the gold and four on gold. To me, this is, you know, pretty much 100% uh, that he's going to go fast castle. If somebody builds tower on their gold, that means they're not going to make units. If they are super heavy on food like this and gold, that also means that they're going to be fast castling because there won't be a lot on wood, so no production, obviously. So I'm making a couple of horsemen here. I'm supervising. I'm getting all my Imperial officials. I'm on 1TC. If I go 2DC now, I'm probably going to have a pretty hard time in this game as I will not get any relics. He'll get to do whatever he wants to. Maybe he'll just go 3TC himself. I'll basically give up all the map control, so I cannot go 2DC. Uh, I have to do a fast castle strat myself. The stable's really good for that, because if you're up against somebody who's also castle, lancers are better than, let's say, palace guards. Um, that's just in general. You don't want to be doing samurai, mana arm type units um, against other castle age opponents, simply because of crossbows and knights countering those units. So I build a tower on my gold. I'm going to fast castle myself. 
supervising the gold, supervising the food. I've got a lot of sheep this game, so I don't have to think too much about going out. I wall here. I have my barbican placed here, covering the wood, so it's defensive. He cannot harass up here. As you can see, if he were to go in with his shinobi, the food here is gathered by two hand cannons, so he immediately takes 50 damage. The shinobi can take uh, four shots from those. And so if he does that, he will not get any you know, kills. So he cannot really harass me. I've got the tower here. I see the shinobi is pretty much um, unraidable. And now I see that he's aging up. He's got the stable, so I immediately know he's going to be going for lances. So what do I do? Well, I'm thinking I also have to get up, of course. I'm macroing towards this, as you can see here. And I'm going to have to get a barracks out pretty quickly. The barracks is going to be very important because if I'm going to get raided by lances or trying to deny relics, I'm going to need those spears. Okay, let's speed forward a little bit again. These horsemen are really, really important. I've got one villager kill. That's nice, of course. But I also saw from the uh, lack of farms that he's going to be going out on the resources on the map. So that's deer and so on. So I go and I lame one of the, the deers here. That's really smart if you want to give your opponent a lot of idle time on their villages or potentially have it to build many mills and stuff. So spreading out your deer like this, if you have the APM for it, is a great idea. I also see his walling. So he is, he's aware that it, he's getting raided and stuff. And uh, the way he deals with that is by walling. Putting one spearman forward. So now he's just aged up, which means he's gotten the Yorishiro into the stable. And I now see that the priest is here. So that's what I want to go for. So as you can see here, he goes, he picks up the relics. I snipe the Yorishiro priest. And on the actual floating gate landmark, there will be another minute before he's going to get another priest. So, now I can go back. There'll be a long time before he goes for another relic. And uh, yeah, I'm getting up myself in... Actually, yeah, I'm already up, sorry. So, clock tower into immediate monastery. I've got barracks, stable, I'm producing lances, and I'm producing spearmen. That's the way I'm going to be dealing with this. Okay, so here, spears come in. Just a little bit of micro here. I've got villagers around here, but I can immediately garrison them. I just need to not lose this monk here, so microing a bit, getting the spears onto the lances. Nothing too crazy. Right? So, yeah. As you can see, I'm running out of food as well, so I have to think about my next food source. Do I want to get this one here, the deer and the berries, or do I want to go up here? And I choose to go up here. I'm going to build a village, a tower, and a mill. So this is enough to garrison all of the units that I'm going to have here. So 12 villages plus... Um, an Imperial official, and that's 13. You can fit 13 inside of the village and outpost. Of course, I'm going to be putting more villagers, so I'll just build more towers and stuff. The most important thing is I don't run out of food. I don't want to start a farm transition now, because that's going to kill me. Um, I want to end this game before I have to make too many farms. All right. As for units, I have a few horsemen, I have a few knights, a few spears, and he only has six lances. So I can keep trying to deny the uh, relics. Most important thing is that I get my own relics. That's what this entire strategy is about. It's denying relics so that his strategy doesn't pay off. And then I'm going to get more villagers because I'm Chinese on Song Dynasty. So as you can see, I'm on 10 villagers more than him. 48 versus 38. Gotta watch out. These uh, lances, the samurai here, the mounted samurai, are really, really strong. They have the deflective armor. So yeah, watch out for those. I'm getting upgrades on my tower here. Because I know that he's going to go and try to raid that. So, yeah. In my base, just supervising. Uh, spear production, getting the veteran C number 3. Trying not to take too much damage here, I end up losing one villager. So nothing too bad. Still, would have been better if I didn't lose that. Alright, now I'm gathering stone. I initially wanted to go for a second TC here. Um, but then I felt like I got four relics. And that was really really strong for me so i'm gonna get a lot of gold he's not gonna get a lot of gold i also have a lot of food up here so i don't need to play the long game i'm already very much ahead so what i can do is i can just use that stone to upgrade instead and secure multiple positions on the map so i'm gathering gold i'm gonna get a keep at some point that i'm gonna do a keep drop with on his base when i attack him um, but if that's not possible i can just upgrade my own towers maybe go for a second tc all right so here I see the archers for the first time. This is a bit of a problem for me um, because the archers are a little bit rough to deal with. 
uh, when you're only on spears, so I have to continue making lances. I don't think I take too many, too much damage here. Um, I end up defending this pretty well, and then I've upgraded my stuff up here. Now I'm getting the fortify outpost here. Um, I'm, I have so much food up here, I have to secure it. And then I'm raiding his new reinforcements at the same time. I'm also looking out where could he be gathering from. I see the deer over here is killed. And so he's walled off. But apparently my spears can go through. So they'll find their own way. Up here. Doing very fine. I did not take a single villager kill, a villager loss here. Uh, from his attack. And I'm using my lances to take out all of the horsemen. Um, I'm getting my plus one ranged armor now. I did not get any get any upgrades before that because I'm just playing counter units, spears, countering the samurai, the mounted samurai. But now he has archers, so now I'm going to get the ranged armor. I find a gap in his walls here, and so I find his villagers as well. Uh, he sees this, so he doesn't lose any villagers, but it's a nice little idle time. You want to try to find all the damage you can. This is also damage because his village is not working. I was trying to raid with these over here, but he ends up finding my samurai. So there is a lot of, uh, what will you say, harassment going on, but I'm not doing any damage, so to speak. I'm just dragging the game on. And the good thing is, the longer this game goes for me, assuming he's on 1TC and I'm, on, I'm only on 1TC, um, is I get more and more villagers than him. And so in the end, my eco is better and I should come out on top. I just need to not take a bad fight. And harassing like this is pretty good for me. I'm still gathering stone, I'm still gathering gold and food, and I'm actually just making more lances, more spears. And now I'm going on to the boar, walling off the boar here in such a fashion, like I explained in the last uh, video, is better than building a tower because it's really cheap to make these walls. And I've already gotten the towers up here, so I can naturally lead my opponent to go around or delay him by having him attack the palisades. He now goes for my front here, so that's a good opportunity for me to do some damage again. Because he really wants to do some damage himself. I'm on four relics, getting my fourth one. Uh, back home, it's coming... where is it? How about another relic? There it is. So the fourth relic coming through now, building another monastery. A little tip here is don't build a second monastery before you actually have a relic to deposit there. So you want to have four relics before you build the next one. Because 200 wood is kind of a lot. And getting the monastery uh, before you have the relics is a problem because most of the times you might get unlucky. You might only get three relics, so the monastery is wasted. All right, here's some pretty important... He has a pretty important fight, I would say. Um, he's got a lot of samurai here, and I've got a lot of spears. And everything's upgraded. I've got my plus two ranged armor, but he's also got his upgraded Yumi over here. I see none of them have any ranged attack upgrades, which is really good for me. Still, they do a lot of bonus damage to my spears, so I'm not super confident. I want him to commit a little bit more. I pull back my units here to the stealth forest. He keeps on pushing, and then I come through with the lances. I take out two amount of samurai, and then I charge with my lances. So if we switch to his view, he doesn't actually always see my units. When I push through, that's a bit of a problem for him. Because these lances are a lot faster, he's not doing any damage to them, and he cannot just stand there and fight. He's also starting to make samurai. As I said before, lancers are pretty good at dealing with uh, army units in general. So uh, him making samurai is actually worse than making lancers. Uh, sorry, mantle samurai, because they're getting countered by the lances that I have. He's now built a forward position here. This indicates to me that he does not make farms because he's going hardcore for these berries. Double tower is a pretty big commitment in resources. So he should not have a lot of farms. He has five farms. That's not a lot. He's also run out of food here and he's not gathered up here because we, we lamed these deer. So he probably thought it's not worth it. So now he's in the berries here. And if I lock this position down, he's going to be out of food. So this is a win condition for me strangle him in some sense and you know make it so that he does not have any more resources if i force him to make a lot of farms that means he's not making units if i have to um play around that that means if i can constantly pump units so gathering deer here boar and stuff not going on farms then i can win simply by having more units because he has to make farms to create food 
I take a really, really good fight here. And now I am actually making a market. Sending villagers forward in just a little bit here. Here they come. And I'm going to be doing a keep drop here on his wood line. Right here. It's going to cancel the food and his double wood here. Which means he has to move to a whole other wood line. And if that's the case, then I probably won the game already. So I'm still... And twice as much military, but these are also very high quality units. The spears and lances. He mostly has archers, so my army value is a lot higher than his. I have a Nista Beast as well to deal with units behind the walls. As I don't have any range units, it can be a good idea to introduce Manganels or any other type of catapult unit like Nista Beast. And now I'm doing the key drop. This is where I'm trying to win the game. I have a lot of units here to control. The most important thing is these towers here. Don't shoot at my villagers. If they kill all my villagers, this is super delayed. I'm going to lose villagers and I have to complete this tower. It's super important. So I pull the villagers a little bit back here to try to get out of range of the towers and then move back in again. Then take out the towers afterwards. Right. The keep goes up and I managed to finish the game here in just a second because he has no food. He has no wood and yeah he has a keep in his face he just lost all his army and that's pretty much how you deal with the fast castle strategies fast castle is super strong for the japanese but this is how you deal with it um quite simple take away the resources try to deny relics if you get three or more relics you're in a very good position usually there's not a need for a second town center even if you're playing a save that does not have access to um you know increased villager production like the french like uh, chinese um you should still be in a good position because you got that eco advantage and so you just have to play um very much focused on harassing and just doing minor damage everywhere until you can deal the killing blow with a keep drop all right that's all for me uh if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below i'll do my best to answer them if you're interested in coaching let me know as well there will be some info about that right now so yeah see you have a Good New Year's.